Baker, The Remedy for Fear. The Remedy for Fear, Greg Baker. Have you ever been terrified? I'm not talking about butterflies in the stomach before a speech contest. I'm talking about knee knocking, teeth chattering, white knuckle, palms sweating, spit dust, scared to death. There I was standing on a 12 inch by 12 inch steel plate, my hands gripping the wing support on the Cessna jump plane. The wind hitting me at over 100 miles an hour. 3,000 feet below me, earth. <laughs> and waiting for the gentle words of the jump master to scream in my left ear, go! And all I could remember was my brother's question 20 minutes before. Why would anyone jump out of a perfectly good airplane? <laughs> what is the remedy for fear? Is it courage? Courage only gives us the ability to harness fear. John Wayne once said that courage is being scared to death and saddling up anyway. anyway. Is the remedy for fear knowledge? Well, knowledge is reason. Fear is emotion. And we all know that sometimes reason and emotion collide. What is the remedy for fear? I believe that the remedy for fear is believing. Believing in yourself, believing in others. Dr. Hans Dreyer, who spent his life studying clinical depression, was asked towards the end of his career, what is the root cause of depression? He didn't hesitate. He said, people stop believing. You must believe in yourself. Are there any golfers in the crowd? Golfers have this wonderful little trick they do. They hit a great shot, 200 yards. And as after they hit the shot, they kind of strut a little bit. They look around to make sure everyone noticed it was a great shot. And then they walk or ride towards the ball. And as they get closer and closer to the ball, and they notice that between where the ball lies and the green is a water hazard. And what do they do? I call it the Eeyore effect. Oh no, what do I do now? And they have the audacity to reach into their golf bag and pull out what they call the water ball which is an old ball that they don't hit anymore, which they plan on hitting into the water. And the moment they grab that ball, they've given up on themselves. The second remedy for fear is believing in others. No matter what happens to you in life, no matter what people do to you, you must believe in others. When I was about 11, my older brother Mark and my cousin Jimmy convinced me that it would be great fun to climb on that steer that was inside the corral. <laughs> and that steer was all by itself. And there was a reason that steer was by itself. It was mean. <laughs> well, I told him I was worried about falling off. I was scared to fall off. They convinced me that I would have a better chance of staying on that steer if they tied my legs underneath oh, wow. with a length of bailing twine. I didn't know that you could ride a steer upside down. <laughs> and it took me a long time to believe anything those two clowns said again. But to this day, I would trust either one of them with my life. When you believe in other people, you believe in the good in other people. Every year, there's thousands of businesses that give away free meals and tickets to sporting events on Veterans Day. Last year, a group of us went to Country Buffet, and it was a cold November day, and the line was about 150 people deep. But it was a lot of fun. All military people and their families, 
and things haven't changed. There was a young man in a Navy cap that said to an older gentleman in a Marine cap, well, you know, the Marines are a department of the Navy. And the old gentleman shot back, yes, yeah, son, they're the men's department. <laughs> <laughs> and we were all having a great time. And a van pulled up, and this old gentleman stepped out with the help of his granddaughter. He was clearly a World War II vet. And in unison, all 150 people on that cold November day lifted their right hand, pointed towards the door, and said in unison, front of the line. The old gentleman nodded. And you know, we weren't so, quite so cold after that. What are you afraid of? Public speaking? Asking that person you admire for their advice? Telling that special someone, I love you? Skydiving? The last 65 feet of my first attempt at skydiving involved a grove of pine trees, a couple dozen broken branches, thousands of pine needles slapping me about my body, and a colossal thud as I hit the ground. And as I stood there waiting for my ride back to the airfield, and I gathered up that chute, I looked up at the sky and said to myself, I believe I'll try that again. <laughs> Madam Toastman. <laughs>